I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, and let's focus on verses 9 through 12. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And then Elisha sent him a messenger who said, Go wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be clean. But Naaman got angry, and he left, saying, I was telling myself, he surely will come out, and he'll stand, and he'll call on the name on the Lord his God, and will wave his hand over the spot and cure the skin disease. Aren't Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? And so he turned, and he left in a rage. When we first meet Naaman, He seems like an okay guy. He was the commander of the army of Syria, and he's also called a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. But we soon discover that Naaman had a really huge pride problem, and his pride was on display when he lost his temper outside of Elisha's home. He said there were far better rivers where he came from. And so we see his sin. Naaman was filled with nationalistic pride. Syria meant everything to him. He loved Syria's military superiority, her religion, her culture. He loved his own station in life, and he attributed all of that to the greatness of Syria and their gods. And before we leave Naaman thinking that his story is just an historic account, it's important that we recognize there were Naamans in our own culture. And we call them the men of the world. You know them, the man of the world. He's an interesting type of man, isn't he? The world's most interesting man. In many ways, he's admirable. He has a zest for life. He enjoys the best of all the world and all that it can offer him. The religion of the Bible to the worldly man is completely unreal compared with his perceived reality in the world. He's a self-made man. The worldly man ponders Jesus and the cross, and yet he sees little to glory in compared with all that he has in the world. He feels that the kingdom of God is distant and and very unattractive compared with success in this world and all that it can get you. From his point of view, the man of the world feels quite certain that his life is vastly superior to that of the average man, the churchgoer, the man who confines most of his life to the sphere of faith in Jesus and in Christian community. No, if Naaman were going to measure life's value and worth by the amount of excitement and amusement and adventure that it offers, then it was not really of any advantage to follow the God of Israel. Oh yeah, except for that whole leprosy thing. (laughs) Can't get past that. You see, the Naamans of this world eventually must recognize that they are helpless in the world, and they are utterly hopeless outside of this world, that is, in the next life. All of the world's idols will be proven worthless and cannot be trusted unto salvation. And at that point, the man of the world is left to either despair over his fate, or he could humble himself and seek God through his word. And God will prove himself faithful to all who call upon him in true humility. You know what I like is how Elisha humbly displayed that the word of the Lord is more important than God's messenger even. Through his closed door, Elisha didn't even walk out to see the man, the most important man of the world. Through his closed door, Elisha simply preached the word of God for Naaman. Elisha didn't walk outside of his house. Naaman's healing did not come through the prophet's mega persona, through his eloquence or some innate power that Elisha possessed. It was the power of God working through Naaman's obedience to God's word that would bring about Naaman's healing. And it'll bring about ours as well. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. If you're being ministered to through the daily teaching of Groundworks Ministries and you would like to help us lead God's people back to the Bible, 
Would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? Because we need your support now more than ever. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website. And by the way, there's a bunch of other interesting things on our website too. So check us out at groundworksministries.com.